What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're looking at my top five free agents that could potentially be available this offseason for the Detroit Lions to sign. Maybe these aren't the top five to every single team, but they're the top five, in my eyes, for the Detroit Lions this offseason. And these are players that are going to cost a lot of money. So if you don't want to see money get spent, this is not the video for you. The video for you is a video I'm thinking of doing called Budget Free Agents that are maybe more realistic. And uh, if you guys want to see it, let me know in the comments below. But otherwise, we're going to be looking at my top five. Now, like I said, they're going to cost a lot of money. We could potentially only get like one, of, one, maybe two of these players, but they are my top five and I think they fill out huge needs. So they may not be the top five free agents available, right? Because I'm not going to put Dak Prescott on here, but I believe they're the top five free agents that could really help out the Detroit Lions and uh, what they need to do. So let's get started. So coming in number five, we have Jack Conklin. I believe that's how you say his last name, but he is an offensive tackle for the Tennessee Titans. And I love the thought of bringing in a guy that's maybe the best offensive tackle that could be potentially a free agent. So if you're looking at and assuming that everybody's going to be a free agent that, you know, could potentially be a free agent, taking out the franchise takes, because obviously a lot of these guys on here may not become available. We understand that. But assuming they are, that's how I made the list. So assuming that, you know, you look at the offensive tackles and who are available, I think Jack, Jack here is the best offensive tackle that will be available out of Tennessee. And I like the thought of bringing in a new offensive tackle to replace Rick Wagner. Not necessarily Taylor Decker. He wasn't awful. His profile focus grade was solid, and he's also not a very old offensive tackle. Instead, replacing Rick Wagner is where I'm looking. I think he's really struggled. He's an older offensive tackle, and uh, yeah, we could use a replacement there. And bringing a guy like Jack could potentially allow you to have the option to trade away a guy like Rick Wagner, maybe get a little bit in return, and also add a beast of an offensive tackle um, that you can replace with, again, not an old offensive tackle that can stick around for a while and be a really main piece of your offensive line. I always look at trenches out and that's why he comes in number five. It's not a beautiful skill position pick and not a lot of these guys are, but I think they really fill in some big needs. And I think offensive tackle could potentially be a huge need if you get a guy like this. Comes in number five. I think I said that wrong. I think it would be a big need. It's a big need, maybe not our biggest, but a guy like this would be so good for us that he has to make it on the list. All right, now let's hop into number four. Let's hop into number four. And we have an outside linebacker, an edge rusher, a pass rusher in Shaq Barrett. Now, Shaq Barrett, I'm a little bit, you know, a little bit cautious to put him on there because he hasn't had these kind of numbers for his whole career. Like, let's look at his numbers over time. His first year, five and a half sacks, then one and a half sacks, then four sacks, and three sacks. But this year with the Buccaneers, after getting away, after getting away from Denver and getting really comfortable with Tampa Bay and this new team, and his first year with Tampa Bay, 19 and a half sacks. Didn't make that up. 19 and a half sacks, one interception, and 58 total tackles. That's beautiful. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. He could potentially be the defensive player of the year this year. I'm not even kidding. He's in the voting for it. So with that being said, Shaq Barrett is an absolute beast. And I know, yeah, I don't think Ed Rusher is the biggest need defensively. I do think it is a big need. Don't get me wrong. So with that being said, adding a pretty big need and also maybe getting one of the best best edge rushers in the game. I don't care if he's been sort of quiet. Maybe he just finally figured it out and he could be a free agent. Now, obviously, Tampa is going to want to bring this guy back, but if they can't, please come to Detroit. Shaq, please. I mean, we got cookies? No, we don't. I don't know. We probably got them oatmeal cookies. Gosh dang it. Who made the oatmeal cookies? I mean, we're trying to get Shaq over here and he made oatmeal. Who am I talking to? All right, let's hop into number three. At the number three spot is Javon Hargrave. Javon Hargrave, I believe I'm saying that right. Yeah, I think I'm saying that right. The defensive tackle out of Pittsburgh. Now, Javon here is a really, really solid defensive tackle. And I think this is possibly the biggest need this offseason, honestly, in my opinion. And, uh, you know, like I say always, you know, maybe snacks could be gone. Aishon Robinson looked like he's going to be out of here. Defensive tackle is a huge need. And Javon won't cost as much as another guy that I know all of you guys are thinking about, but at the same time, he does feel a solid need. He's not a necessarily a huge pass rusher from the defensive tackle position, how many defensive tackles are, but he did put up four sacks and 68 total tackles. I feel like he's a younger defensive tackle that fills out a need that we, we are just due. We are due to have a great defensive tackle and really helps solidify how talented this front seven can be with a beast defensive tackle. He goes in number three, or three. Coming in at number two, we have Brandon Sheriff, the offensive guard from the Washington Redskins. Okay, maybe the best guard in the game. He was first in sacks allowed. First. Jack Conklin, Conklin was fourth in sacks allowed by his position. Brandon Sheriff here is first in sacks allowed by his position at the offensive guard spot. And I know guard is a huge need for us, left guard specifically. And maybe even right guard if we can't get Graham Glasgow back. If we can't get Glasgow back, then guard is definitely a huge need. So with that, we need to fill out the guard spot. And Brandon Sheriff is a guy I love looking at. 75 profile focus grade. 
Like I said, first in sacks allowed, which is absolutely beautiful. Younger, not young, but younger offensive lineman. Maybe the best offensive lineman that could potentially be a free agent. And yeah, I would love, I, oh, I would love to sign this player. Keep Stafford on his feet, not on his back. First in sacks allowed. That number to me, ooh, I love that. He gives a number two. Now, before we get to number one, I want to look at some honorable mentions where we have Dante Fowler Jr., an edge rusher from Jacksonville, 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 and also Derrick Henry, the running back out of Tennessee. The best running back maybe in the game, maybe the best running back that could hit free agency. We'll see if the Titans allow it to happen. They're going to offer him probably a lot. Um, I would offer him a lot more than I would offer Tannehill, and I would offer him first because I think you need Derrick Henry. You don't need Tannehill. I'm just saying. With that running team, you don't need him. You only threw like six passes and you're winning playoff games. I'm just saying. Either way, he's a baller. He's an honorable mention. But now, now coming into number one, the best player, or the best free agent that we could potentially get this offseason, in my eyes, is Chris Jones, the defensive tackle out of Kansas City. Oh my goodness. This guy is putting up edge rusher numbers from the defensive tackle position. I believe he's the best defensive tackle. He's not old at all. He is just an absolute stud out of Kansas City. And Kansas City may not have the best defense overall, but they do have pass rushers. And one of those guys that creates so much pressure that collapses the pocket that we need is Chris Jones. Oh, nine sacks, 36 combined tackles. He's basically a pass rusher playing defensive tackle, just a stud, and I would love to have him. I think he would just pull the whole front seven together, and he would cost a lot of money as well. He comes in number one. Let me hear your thoughts, comments below. If you guys want to see a budget one or a part two where I go over my next, like, I don't know, six through ten, make sure you let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'm out.